You know, it is hard for younger families right now. It just is. I just got off the horn of this guy. Guy's just crushing, kicking ass and taking names. Almost identical scenario to me. It's so funny. He's about 20 years my senior. But uh, just he went to the Army after high school. Uh, he had his ups and downs in terms of, uh, you know, he had a girlfriend. He was, anyway, it took him a long time to settle down before he finally decided to uh, get married, which is probably the best decision he ever made. It certainly was for me. Just like me, and uh, and he went through uh, some hard financial times as, as I did with debt, and he's like, you know, he's making money. It's like, oh, I can do this, and all of a sudden, the rug gets pulled out, and uh, you know, he's he survived. He's a survivor, but uh, it's funny because he's he's trying to build his portfolio, his financial security, and he's gonna be fine because basically they just don't spend that much. Their social security is covering it. He's retired uh, from the military, small pension from the National Guard, not huge, but you know, it helps. But, uh, you know, he's not making bank. I mean, it was between his Social Security for he and his wife and his small pension. I mean, he's making money, but he's fine because they just don't spend that much money. Shocking, shocking. But he's trying to help out his son. And his son is, you know, trying to raise a family on his own son's salary. And uh, his son's making 23 bucks an hour. 23. And you take 23 bucks an hour, you times by 2080. That's the amount of in a 40-hour work week. That's how many hours you work. So uh, 2080, son's making 47,000 a year, 47,840. We'll just say 50,000 for simplicity, a little bit over time. That's before taxes, all right? And so I started thinking, and, and it's, they can't, you know, they, they, you know they, and they just have a brand new baby, bounce a baby, wife wants to stay home, and good, good on her. It's just, so I'm sitting there, that guy's making, we'll say 50,000 a year. And he's out in the field, too, in, in, uh, in the heat of where they live. And I started thinking, what if they try to buy the house I used to live in? This is the house I first owned when Charlotte and I, this is our first house. We own this in Phoenix, Arizona. Three bed, two bath, 1,200 square foot uh, in Monona Drive, which is well north of Phoenix. I'll show you the map here in just a second. I actually planted that tree right there. I don't know if you can see it. My big, I planted that guy. That guy was a stick, and I planted that guy. You can see nothing fancy this house, tiny little backyard, nothing. I mean, you can see the backyard. I guess I can't. Look at it. Anyway, you can see nothing fancy. Yeah, tiny little backyard. They got grass in there. They shouldn't. Did we? I don't think we put grass. I can't remember. They shouldn't have grass in the desert. It's dumb. Don't do that. Actually, I planted both these palm trees. Anyway, this house right here is $434,000. All right, so we're going to say the debt to income ratio for you to be able to buy a house. The debt to income ratio. Now let me just show you the map where this house is too, by the way, because this is a hike downtown to a, I think this is the map here. One sec. Uh, oops. Uh, what happened? Let me, can we do street view? Oh, there we go. Um, yeah. So there's that little house. All right. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. There's that little house right there. I, I planted those two palm trees. All right. So we're going to show you the map how far away this is from uh, downtown. I think I should do, I don't want satellite. So here's the 101 they just put in there. That that wasn't there when I, we first moved. Let me just keep going back, keep going back, keep going back. So here comes uh, Cave Creek. Where should I gotta go? Scottsdale, yeah, I gotta keep going. There's downtown Phoenix, look at that. So if you worked like the hospital or I used to work at the, uh, um, on Capitol, whatever it was at Capitol Hill, but the uh, you know the Capitol building, I used to work there. That's a freaking commute, dude. It's Phoenix traffic. Here's uh, Squaw Peak Parkway right here, and this 17. I mean, you're stuck in a lot of freaking traffic, a lot of traffic. So you're out, is what I'm saying. You're way out. So for um, so the debt to income ratio of a house that costs four hundred thirty four thousand dollars. All right, you want to keep your debt to income below 38%. It used to be, what, 26 to 38 or something like that, 38%. So if you're making $50,000 a year, we're going to divide that by 12. That's uh, 4166 a month. That's what you're making before taxes, gross. 4166 a month. You should be paying no more than 0 .035, 1458 a month on your mortgage payment. You got 4166 gross, you should be paying no more than 1458 a month in your mortgage payment. So let's take a look on that house right there. Uh, how much was this house again? 450, I think. 434. So we're going to go 434, 300, present value, zero future value, 360 payments. 
we're going to say 7% interest rate. Our monthly payment is $2,800, $2,800. Our monthly payment is twice what the debt to income, the highest debt to income ratio would be essentially. You can't afford the house on one income. It's, it's just, I mean, I, I, look, I, I'm the guy who makes light of the inflation stuff, but this is, a, this is no joke. That house is not downtown, not centrally located. It's three bed, two bath, a, a 8,000 square foot poach and stamp a lot. And you, let's take a look at the schools in this uh, district too. So here we got great, uh, great schools. You got uh, four out of 10 uh, in a great schools rating, Esperanza Elementary School. Uh, Deer Valley Middle School, three out of ten. Barry Goldwater High School, five out of ten. I mean, you, you can't. This is no joke. I mean, if you want to be in a better school district, you're gonna have to pay a hell of a lot more. But he can't afford this house right here. And that, this is this is you're not even close to it. Not in that kind of income. It's crazy to me. Let's take a look at something here real quick. This is Birchdale Ave, over by where my wife used to live. Um, and this house right here. Three bed, one bath, twelve hundred square foot, three hundred eighty-six thousand um, dollars. I mean, and I'm going to show you the schools here in just a second. Uh, she used to live uh, along here someplace. I can't remember, but anyway, but you can see this house right here. This guy right here. All right, and look, you see, they don't even have central air condition. They got a, a unit there. All right, so then you say, well, what are schools here? All right, cool down here. And we're going to see this neighborhood details. We're going to see the schools. Um, uh, where my wife went to high school, Garfield High School, 2 out of 10. My wife went to middle school, 3 out of 10. Dale Silly, I meant. So we went 7 to 3 to 2. Garfield High School is 2. All right. Um, that's No one's like chomp out the bit to go to Garfield High School, if that makes sense. Let's see where. And so and you, even 386. I mean, even 386,000 bucks. I mean, but here's a one bed, one bath, 645 uh, apartment in that building right there over by where I used to live in, in Silver Spring, Maryland. Welcome to your urban oasis, all right? And uh, this is $180,000, one bed, one bath right in there. And let's take a look at what, uh, actually, I want to kind of see if I can't find the duplex my dad used to rent. So let's see about the schools here. It's kind of, hold on a second. Oh, but guess what? That includes a $600 a month HOA fee. 600 bucks a month on top of the mortgage you got to pay. So he could afford this house, but when you factor an HOA fee, again, this is Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, see if we look at the schools here, uh, nearby schools. So, yeah, so here's my school, Montgomery Blair's five out of 10. And that, that, there's a magnet school for a reason. Uh, I don't know, East Silver Spring, six, Tacoma Park, middle school, seven. So not, not the best schools there either. And even that's 180. Right there, one bed, one bath apartment with a 592 HOA. I mean, it's freaking crazy out there, man. And it's uh, and home ownership is the most important thing to for wealth appreciate uh, appreciation. I, I don't have the answers. I don't have the answers. Thankfully, my man who I just talked to most likely is going to let the son live with him while they get situated and build up some equity. Because remember, you still got to put money down. And this whole thing is just crazy to me. I, I don't know. I, I just, I feel bad for these people. You know what I'm saying? How do you raise a family on one income and buy a house today? I mean, you're going to have to go to some place that's, but I just showed you. I showed you way out north of Phoenix, way north of Phoenix. You, this guy couldn't afford my house. <laughs> and the only reason we could afford it is because we put the sweat equity in because we didn't have a down payment. A VA loan. I don't know. I had a VA loan. The interest rates back then on VA loans were higher than they were on conventional. Then you have uh, showed you a crappy house over by where my wife used to live in uh, Dale City. Showed you an apartment where I used to live in Silver Spring, Maryland. And we just had a duplex my dad rented. In fact, he couldn't afford that. We had to take a guy from West Virginia to stay with us over the, over the week because he moved in with us over the week and he'd go back to West Virginia. Uh, that's nuts, dude. I mean, I don't know what it's like in Omaha and stuff, but you know, these are pretty populated cities, uh, Phoenix, Washington, D.C. area. Yeah. Love your thoughts, man. That's uh, that's not good. So a little bit of sympathy can go a long way for these young up-and-comers, these young whippersnappers. All right, God bless.